I see my video on Maria Valtorta has caused, you know, a lot of commentary. You have some people saying you should get people to read the canonical gospels. You should get them to read sacred scripture. You know, getting somebody to do something is one thing, you know, and uh, but engaging somebody's heart with the mystery of Christ is another. You know, the faith is received by attraction not by imposition. You can't impose an idea on somebody. Christ himself didn't impose himself on those that came to him looking for the truth. You know, if we think of the rich young man and you have that dialogue and and at the end, well, if you want to be perfect, go and sell everything you have and come follow me. And the rich young man went away sad. Uh, you know, Christ left a man sad. You know, he, he, it's, today we, we fail to think about these things, but he left a man depressed, in a sense, because the man had a lot of wealth and he wasn't prepared to give it up for Christ. Now, Christ didn't run after him and said, look, I have a friend, Lazarus, and he's very, very rich. And sure, look, do you know what we'll do? We'll make a compromise here. Look, you'll work, sure, you can um, accommodate some of my apostles along the way, or you can uh, you can uh, help us financially. You can be part of the project. You can be, uh, I don't know, I don't know. You can work for, you can be with us a few days a week. <laughs> if, if you think about it, Christ demanded, uh, set the bar high, and he didn't lower it. And... Um, and it's the same thing today uh, when you're trying to awaken in this world the reality of Christ. Yesterday, uh, Roger Book, he is the author of The Gentle Traditionalist and Cor Jesu Sacratissimum. Uh, Roger Book, who um, did a video on the new religion that is permeating the West, especially the West, Europe, America and filtering down to Latin America. The new religion, the new age religion, uh, all of these ideas brought over by um, Blavatsky and Alice Bailey uh, and other, um, you know, advocates of occultism, theosophy, anthroposophy, uh, these various different ideas that, that have, you know, permeated the West, that this is why you have a ubiquitous yoga everywhere even in catholic circles you have catholics who have gone over and have become completely infatuated with eastern ideas you know because christ isn't good enough for them christ didn't have all the truth christ didn't have everything so in this time our lord has left a sign for this generation a very clear sign and if you want to look at the sign, you can, or you can ignore it. But he has left a sign with Maria Valtorta. And the sign is, the, is thousands and thousands and thousands of signs in her work. So the great intellectuals will read her writing and say, well, it's just a romanticized thing. You know, it's romanticized. And completely ignore the science. Whereas, you know, somebody who is an engineer or an historian or an expert biblical scholar who takes the time to actually read the writings can say, well, this isn't other anything other than supernatural. It is supernatural work. There is no doubt when you read Mal Maria Valtorta's poem of the man God, it is a supernatural work. And then when people realize, well, it is a supernatural work, there is no doubt about it. It is a supernatural work. It's demonically inspired. So this is where we move on to sometimes in Catholicism. It's the, the demon can deceive us. But you, after reading Maria Valtorta, what deception is our Lord going to give us? What deception is in that work that Satan would tempt us with? What is the heresy that he wants to bring into the church? Because all you do when you read Maria Valtorta is you become you fall headlong in love with sacred scripture. You, you will go back to sacred scripture. You fall you fall head, you fall in love with Christ. You fall in love with his sacraments, his church, his mission, his way of loving. 
Christ changes your imagination. He changes your will. He changes your heart. And these are all very important things in the spiritual life because we have to cast off the old man and put on the new man in Christ. And in a world today which has so many experts, you know, we have so many experts in the church. People that spend their years and they're studying every little last letter of sacred scripture and going through the, the Dead Sea Scrolls, putting together, trying to reconstruct uh, uh, the life of Christ. And what does Christ do? He chooses a humble woman to reveal facts to us, signs to us. Now, it's part of private revelation. And you can read um, the number 69 in the Catechism, What is Private Revelation? And it's in that sphere that this work will sit. So the debate can go on. It's never going to be part of the deposit of the faith. It's never going to be another gospel in the Catholic Church. So... If you're a Protestant here listening to me, uh, what is this Robert Nugent talking about? To have the Catholics gone off and invented a new Mormon um, gospel, <laughs> you know, because uh, this is what Mormons did. They have this book that they say is revealed by an angel. Yes, uh, it bears practically no resemblance to our Lord in a fictional world. The, the, the poem of the man God touches on so many signs in history, people, places, artifacts, lunar cycles, geography, etc., etc. Once you just analyze those signs, then you, you're left thinking, okay, well, I'm convinced now it's of supernatural origin. Is it from Christ? Is it from Satan? Is it a temptation from Satan? Is it a, a sign from Christ? But then you analyze what are the gifts of the Holy Spirit? What does the Holy Spirit do? And what does the spirit of Satan do? You know, if, the ho if all of the fruits of the Holy Spirit are manifest in the lives of those who read the poem of the man God, then it's a, you have to question. You know, if the poem of the man God was going off and creating lots of Christian sects, well, I'm part of the Valtortian church now. I've left the Catholic church and I'm off doing this and I'm a priest of her church and I'm a priest of this. And then you would know that it's a, it's demonically inspired because Satan doesn't do that. Sorry, Satan does do that. Christ doesn't. Satan does divide. Satan does cause um, uh, division. Uh, he, he, he creates unrest. Whereas the fruits of the poem of the man God are peace, love for the church, you know, love for Christ, love for his blessed mother, love for his gospel. You will read the gospel again and again and again and again and again. Lexio Divina will be something transforming in your life. You will engage with Christ. He will transform your mind, your will, your heart, your imagination. I mean, even on, as I said in other videos, even on the literary level. Because we spend so much time, you see, Catholics, oh, I saw this thing on Netflix and I saw that movie. There was even Catholics uh, reviewing uh, Barbie. I kid you not. A priest on YouTube reviewing Barbie. Now, you couldn't drag me to a cinema for <laughs> any amount, well... well I might go for some amount of money, but I'd probably use it for something else. But you just couldn't drag me to the cinema to watch something so banal as <laughs> that movie. And I have no interest. I've been to the cinema once in four years. Because I have no interest. I have no time. I don't feel drawn to that anymore. I think... Christ's gospel, Christ's message, Christ's love is so captivating. The world needs to know this. And our Lord in the church, in a church that has confusion at this moment. Confusion up there, confusion here. In a church that has confusion, Christ is not asleep. He's left a sign in that work. So navigate those signs in the work. Debunk them if you want. Take the time. Marie Valtorta has written down so much detail. Debunk it. 
the characters, the places, the places she couldn't have known about because they don't, they're not even mentioned in the gospel. They weren't known when she wrote that work. That's the great mystery. How could Maria Valtorta have written it? How could she have written it without a schema? You know, when you're writing such a novel of that magnitude, you would have to have thousands and thousands of notes knitting together characters. Or you would have to have such a mind, such a genius of a mind, you know, that uh, you're able to, to do this. Uh, the, and the reality is this Catholic woman was inspired by the Holy Spirit to, to write that down. It is a sign from our Lord. And private revelations have happened in the church over the 2000 years to strengthen the church when it's weak. You have so many Catholics running off. Oh, I'm off to become Orthodox and I'm off to become Protestant and I was Protestant and became Catholic and now I'm leaving the church. Like they, they, they can't fathom the confusion. They just don't understand the confusion. They haven't read the gospel, the canonical gospel. Never mind Maria Veltorte. They haven't read the gospel. They haven't had a personal relationship with Christ. If you know Christ in the midst of the storm and see Christ in the midst of the storm, the confusion, why would you leave him? Because he's there in the midst of the storm. You know, Roger Book in his video yesterday talks about spiritual adultery. You know, we're, we're, we're always edging off to this religion or that religion. This is what Catholics are doing or abandoning the religion because they've never, they've never known it. And so few take the time to actually study the faith. And that's the challenge I'm giving you. Study the faith. You know, our Lord has left a sign in this oh, so intellectually, intellectual age. In this age where we've all the tools to analyze those signs. Quantum computers and AI to analyze the signs in the poem of the man God. Obviously understanding that Valtorta is describing what she is seeing. Of course, she might see something and describe it wrong, but she's describing. But the lunar, lunar cycles, it's very hard to get those wrong. So I challenge you. I challenge Valtorta's detractors. I challenge the atheists looking at this channel. Read Maria Valtorta, the poem of the man God. Read the Valtorta Enigma. I'll put a link below. And try and debunk that. And if our Lord is sending a sign, why is he sending a sign to the church at this moment? The sign is to, 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 is, for me, it's an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. It really is. It's, it's like, a, it's an outpouring of, of, of grace for the church. And how, there's so many advocates for this and they're all agreeing. It is an outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Anyway, God bless you. Take care. Bye bye.